same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the same Thank you, Vandello, and welcome once again to Graphically Novel. My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fieri, and with me... Oh, I'm worried about this one. ...is the man that I'll look at and say, it hurts. You need to know that, but I'm going to endure it. Oh. That's fair. Oh, gross. <laughs> I feel dirty. <laughs> oh, and with us, as usual, the lovely and talented, visiting us from places far afield, the Miss Jennifer Howland. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. Uh, and as always, it's my pleasure to inter- introduce our guest. Um, today, we have Lucas Green. Thank you so much for joining us, Lucas. I will get my revenge on all of you. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my revenge on Josh after that intro. See you in 10, I mean 15, I mean 20 years. <laughs> so, Lucas, you are here with us to discuss the myriad of ways that we have experienced the uh, the the Korean, I believe it was it was Korean, no, it was Japanese, then Korean, then American, versions of Old Boy. But uh, before we get to that, this is the first time you've been on a graphically novel, novel production. Uh, can you give us a little bit of your background in comics? Well, I uh, started reading comics in about 2000. Six when uh, some jerk I went to college with took me to the comic store for the first time and I started spending all my money there. That fucking guy. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, before that, and relevant to this, uh, I was into anime and manga through most of high school as, and college as well uh, prior to that. And that was kind of my <laughs> the first time I came across this one. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay, so you've you've experienced old boy for a long time then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I came across it uh, originally uh, when I was kind of... 15 years worth. Yeah. <laughs> came across it when I was uh, trying to watch a bunch of stuff that I thought was edgy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is edgy even for 2021, so... <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, the other stuff it had company with was like Battle Royale and Ichi the Killer, which are arguably worse. Bloodier, which we'll get into, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, since you have started into comics, like, what are you into? Do you read any currently or what are your big? I haven't read any in a few years. Um, most of the stuff I was into was uh, actually a little bit more of the oddball pop, uh, X-Men and Space Marvel and some of the yeah. weirder stuff like that. <laughs> You've been mentioned on yeah. the show before because I gave you full credit for you guaranteed me that I would like when Marvel did Guardians of the galaxy and I, I walked did. out of that going how how did they do that it had a talking raccoon and a fucking tree as you, two you, characters you did make fun of I, me for several years regarding uh rocket raccoon before that so it's true it's i true. feel like it was just well and i feel like you lucas were the one who suggested squirrel girl too i it was at least brought up uh in conjunction with me most likely yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Squirrel Girl, Dazzler, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, a lot of the the and and I have actually grown to appreciate Dazzler more and more as well. Um, especially in the newer uh, run, the Jonathan Hickman run. She's pretty awesome. She actually got something resembling real powers. No, she still has the same powers. She's just also a rock star, and that opens the door to a lot of things for a mutant. <laughs> I thought in the newer ones, and I haven't read, so I'm just kind of digging back through various conversations that we've had. Didn't she, like, get the ability to, like, actually, like, bend light and, like, make herself invisible or some shit like that? She's kind of always been able to do a lot of, like, shooting lasers and making illusions and stuff to an extent. It's just that most people think about her powers as uh, being focused lights. Basically light manipulation is kind of her, her power. Um but getting back oh man to old boy. Um now for something completely different. Right. So uh, we'll talk about, well, I, I will just say um, there won't be many spoilers for the manga because the manga is pretty close to the plot of what we watched in the Korean movie. Um, and maybe we will have a little more to talk about then because I disagree with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I 
I would also say that the Korean and American versions are similar. Um, with, yes. With some, you know, with some differences. Up to but, this point, yeah. Right. Up to the point of the end of the first. Right. The, so manga. the first manga basically ends halfway through the where the movie takes us. So if you are interested in Old Boy, um, there are eight issues. Then you're weird and you should come talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I, I think we're going to start with the 2003 Korean version, uh, which was the first film adaptation. Um, I'm actually going to toss it to Bear here because he finished it 10 minutes ago. Yeah, like uh, 10, 15 minutes before we started this episode. <laughs> and I just had that moment of, uh, you said it first. I was like, I, I don't know which ending is worse. This one or or the more modern one with I Josh think I, Berlin and Emily Olsen. I think I said, I don't know which one is better or worse or better or worse. <laughs> the more you think about it, the, the better and worse. <laughs> everything keeps getting and it's just like well i mean you've seen the movie at this point or both movies and it's a question of is it better that dad gets hypnotized to forget the secret that he's been boning his daughter so he can keep boning his daughter well that's that's not why he's doing it though. well he's doing it yeah. so that she never finds out but he will keep boning his daughter or that he voluntarily puts himself in prison breaking his his former junkie daughter's heart and possibly sending her into another downward spiral of substance abuse and self-deprecation. So, uh, so you're saying that you, you can't choose? Can, uh, Lucas, Jen, can either of you choose which you thought was the better, worse, better ending? I actually thought the very ending of the English version I liked a little better because it kind of gives this separation. It fits in with the themes a little better. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it also, yeah, <laughs> it's worse for him. Well, but it, it kind of takes this, it kind of takes the self-replicating pattern out of it at that point when he's just like, I know the secret, I'm going to walk away and not have this happen again somewhere yeah. else later down the line. Actually, I kind of disagree. I think the American version is while it seems like he's growing and he's removing himself for this, from the situation, it, he's making it worse for both of them. You know, I think in the Korean version, there's, you know, it, okay, we're talking about taboos now. Right. Yeah. So, you know, do, are we making a social judgment that the Korean version is worse because father-daughter sex? I mean, I have, and is that the only reason? Is that the only reason that it's worse? I, no, I haven't really made up my mind which one's better or worse. I, <laughs> I'm just kind of like, there's no, there's, I don't really think there is a better or worse in this particular setup. <laughs> like I said, it's like, you know, either we're going to continue with, uh, you know, weird modern Western taboo of an incestual relationship that they don't know about, which actually, considering the level of conservatism in America right now, would be absolutely fine. <laughs> well, that's also not just a Western taboo. Yeah, that is a general taboo. Anyway, it's intended to yeah. be a taboo in all the versions. In all cultures. True. Right. But yeah, so it's like, it's, well, unlike a lot of taboos, they're not really a taboo until you have the realization that it's a thing you're not supposed to be doing. So is it even really a taboo if nobody knows? I, I think part right. of it is also the context for both of them is somewhat different and the endings fit with the revenge the villain is trying to get right because no, I, I in the totally korean agree. version he the villain was in a what he considered loving relationship with his sister which resulted in his downward spiral and everything in the american version he was being abused by his father but yeah and but, the implication of that abuse and then him separating himself from it versus the loving relationship and then embracing it kind of fits with the reflections of that i'm not entirely sure because when we when we think about an abusive parental relationship like that at least most people in a western society we think of people doing something being forced to do something against their will but there were clearly a couple of scenes in the american version where literally like well it's the scene where actually the father is going through and, and shooting and everyone. shooting everybody um where he literally walks into pretty much everybody's room and everybody's just like boom oh hey dad or, 
or oh hey honey and it's like we're ready for sex because he walks into his son's room and his son's just like oh dad you're here and instantly reaches down and undoes his belt and he seems excited about it at the time i don't i don't I don't think that really matters though, because they're still minors and and they have been it, groomed to. Yeah. That that yeah. Time. No, that they that, have that been. is that is just because he seems excited about it doesn't mean that that is not gaslighting and abuse, abuse. and all of that. Stockholm syndrome. So, basically, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Okay, and that's that's perfectly fine, and, and I think we can relate that that same thing then back to the Korean version because yeah, you have this you have the scene where he's looking in to I think it was a science lab or wherever mm -hmm. and the the sister pushes him away three or four times during yeah. the scene so it either it's either they're in a loving relationship or they're in an abusive relationship and I think we have to pick which one we're talking about. I think I think it's the same either way. It, it really is. And I think that that is ultimately the the final thing here is that it's more about replicating the cycle than it is about. Right. And I think it is um, both versions are indicative of their cultures. Um, so yeah. I can I can appreciate both versions. Um, I know that going into it, a, a lot of people had told me that the American version was not very good. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I can understand why it wasn't a huge blockbuster, uh, <laughs> you know, just with its themes. But I mean, knowing that it was a Spike Lee movie, uh, oh, knowing it Spike Lee movie, yeah, it was a Spike Lee movie, yeah, yeah. and he was yeah. a huge fan of the of the Korean version, which is why he wanted to adapt it. Knowing it's an adaptation helps um, the the American version because this is not wholly what you would see as an American product. No, um, mm -hmm. I, I in many ways I feel the same way um, about The Departed because um, Scorsese took another Korean movie, uh, Infernal Affairs. And, and translated it to American, uh, an American movie. And in that way, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted by, I'm guessing, Chicago cityscape. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's like gale force winds here. <laughs> Uh, okay. So the, you're hearing the windows whistling as as the wind is picking up. Everybody gets a Dre show. <laughs> on TM, on TM. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's taking uh, another culture's creation and adapting it to Western culture, which in some ways works and in some ways very much does not. I have a lot of examples for animes that were done in live action, you know, American style that did not. Like Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah, yeah a lot like that. Uh, that just failure. did not work. Um, I'm going to blame that on Channel and a Ding Dong, though. I don't think this <laughs> one was as bad, and I and I think that Lee captured the parts that he needed to. Um, yeah, absolutely. The parts that stumbled for me seemed to be, like, watching the Korean version, everybody talks about the Korean version, and especially about the hallway scene. Um, and they were like, oh my god, it's so violent. And then I watched the Spike Lee American version, I'm like, nope, that was way more violent. <laughs> In well, some you ways. know what though? Yes. It was it was it was the the action was very similar. It was yes. gorier. It wasn't more violent, it was gorier. There was more That's blood true. splatter. That's yeah. It, the big thing to me with the difference in the action was the American version felt like it was very abrupt. Everything that like it felt very choreographed. Josh Brolin kind of has this yeah. clumsiness to him. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result, it felt like they needed to make all of the action this very like, we're going to make this a one hit and it caves the guy's head in, as opposed to the Korean version where it felt very raw and like that four minute fight scene in one take mm -hmm. everybody yeah. is like exhausted and panting by the end of it and it feels raw and real and that is a different kind of brutality it, it almost makes yeah. me wonder if that was kind of the inspiration for the scene in daredevil it absolutely was yeah uh the, the, the yeah. inspiration yeah. for a lot of things like that. a lot of those but yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, the one take hallway scene in the second episode of the first season of Daredevil. Yeah. Very, very much. Which this this and other uh Korean 
action movies do the do the do the similarly. I don't know that Old Boy was the first one. I do know that it's probably the most famous example of it. in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um. But yeah, I. So the other thing that actually Bear and I were discussing while watching uh, the Korean version uh, just now was the difference in um. Well, the the main anti. We'll just say Daesu uh, for. For all intents and purposes for both movies. Um, but Desu's revenge on the the man who is running the hotel. Um, actually a lot worse than the Korean version, surprisingly. For the yeah. American version to be like so like like Jen said, like it had it up the gore factor. Taking the strips of skin was actually comparatively very, very tame. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I'm okay. And like for some reason I was perfectly fine, and I would watch the whole scene where it's like we're going to draw a dotted line on your neck and then cut out the little strips of skin where the dots are in preparation to cut your head off. As Rip to, his head off. Oh, right. Rip. Rip his head off, yes. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. well, either way. Um... As opposed to the Korean version where we're just like, I have I have a 12 ounce claw hammer and I'm just going to stick your teeth in between the claws and let your mind go from there. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm, uh, I anyway. literally skipped forward five minutes at that point. I, I don't <laughs> yeah, do I, I looked. I looked away. It was very, I was very squeamish at that scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josh hops up and is like, so you need a drink? And I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Teeth, <laughs> yeah. teeth and, and nails. Teeth and like finger and toenails. I don't even have a problem with mm-hmm. nails. Like, oh no. Like going back to Daredevil, like, you know, the scene where they were torturing Stick at the end of like season three of yeah. Daredevil where they're like doing the whole like bamboo, bamboo spikes yeah. underneath the fingernails. I have, didn't have no problem with that, but teeth, teeth are not cool. <laughs> experiences nail nails i have a problem with because of very early on in my relationship with horror movies i watched stir of echoes oh i'm sorry and there's there's a scene where a hand is like clawing on the floor and the nail Nail. completely snaps back you shouldn't ever watch uh day of the dead then either okay that happens a couple of times good to know yeah uh but yeah just the, the where the choices are for where the intense violent gory moments are is very telling because i, I think i think the gore happening in the hallway is less intimate you know it's, it's a byproduct of i gotta get out of this hallway yes. whereas the the it's, scene it's much more life or death fight or flight yeah, yeah. And so, like like Jen was saying, it's one hit to the, or Lucas was saying, it's one hit to the head, and you need to go down. Mm-hmm. Well, that is a, I need to put you down. Like, there's two dozen guys in this hallway. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the, you know, the torture porn of, right, right. of I've got your, you know, one of your front teeth between the teeth of a claw hammer, and I'm about to, like, just twist the claw hammer. Right, but I mean, at the same time, I, I was uncomfortable in that scene. I was supposed to be uncomfortable in that scene. Yeah. But I don't, I've seen torture porn movies that it's just, this at least like not. Like yeah, anything from like Soft. Anything like from Soft. Hostel. Like three on. Yeah, Hostel. A bunch of those. Um, Human Centipede. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> In this, it was done that that is one of the most brutal things that is done in the movie physically. Um, and there's a reason for that is this person was the sole figure that had, you know, uh, kept him in prison for yeah, 15 years. After him going, why did you do this? Oh, it wasn't you. There was somebody else. Right. And I mean, and he's totally willing to do it to the oh. man who actually, absolutely, you know, did it. But he doesn't get that chance. The villain's torture is worse than having your na- your teeth pulled out by a claw hammer. But it's also it's a psychological torture. Yeah. Yes. It's very rarely a physical torture. So um, yeah, the way that those two characters commit their torture in those scenes, I found really telling about the characters in that case as well. Because one of the big things with it is while Desu is torturing his jailer, he basically admits that he's a monster. Yes. He talks about how he doesn't like this. He doesn't like that this is what he's become. And I feel like throughout the entire thing, we get that sense of it where he does does not have control where he has this very animalistic response to everything around him. And 
then this like shame where he knows he needs to do this, but and is trying to get through it, but also has the shame associated with it. Whereas, well, that's, and that's also reinforced uh, in in the scene where he tries to rape Nido. Yes, in the in the bathroom, which they yep. strayed right the hell away from in the American version, and well, rightfully so. That was not part of that story because he was less a monster in the American. Right, version. and in the American version. I actually, going back to what you were saying about how it's a cultural thing, the version of the bad character that he starts as fits an American stereotype of masculinity. Yep. And the result mm-hmm. of that is a very angry, physically violent, not sexually violent. Whereas Desu is more, I guess, kind of pathetic rather yes. than this masculine, violent, controlling, privileged guy. Oh, yeah, because you... you... I, and I see exactly where you're going with that because in the American version, you have Josh Berlin's character who was essentially a, a drunken womanizing, womanizing. Like he was, he was a man whore, con artist. Yeah, con artist. As opposed to the Korean version where Daesu is. Just I mean, it, it implies that Daesu is still like lecherous, and he's like out but drinking it, and it, hitting it, on other women it, rather than. It kind, of, it kind of implies that he is not successful with it as yes opposed to right the american version right i mean because you have what a five minute scene in the in the jail yeah where he's like totally drunk and just making a ridiculous ass out of himself yeah he's making you know? a ridiculous ass out of he's uh obnoxious and uh the word i had written down was wretched yes good word um and it seems like in the american version like you can't just show that like because people are like oh okay yeah he's he's kind of a loser and whatever no no no. he has to be turned up to 11 so he has to be a you know womanizing dirt bag divorced absent father that you well, know, he wasn't divorced. All these he was people. never married. He was never married. Oh, I thought he was. Okay. In the American version, he was never married. They, he had, he had a daughter. I didn't think that that was his wife. I thought that oh, they were saying his ex-wife, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I, oh, I, maybe. No, you're right. You're right. I'm thinking of the. I'm thinking of the comic. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the comic they don't even mention yeah. his family. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, one of the other things I was surprised, and it's a it's a small thing, but in the American version, this is 2013, and you've got Josh Brolin, Elizabeth Johnson, or Elizabeth Olsen, Olsen yeah. uh Samuel Olsen. Jackson, but then you also have Remy Malik and Lance Reddick. Like for today's standards. Damn, this has been a whole dark, right? Yeah. I mean, even for 2013, Josh Brolin and Samuel Jackson, you know, were, were I, the top build in there. And I, but I can't remember now because it's been a few weeks, actually, since I watched the American version. Did did we get a movie with Samuel L. Jackson in it where he didn't say motherfucker? No, he said motherfucker. Oh, yeah, he definitely. He, no, yeah, he absolutely I, I said like, it. I can't remember. <laughs> no. I can't specifically remember him saying it, but I couldn't, like... No, I guarantee that is 100% in every one of the contracts that he signed. Does he get the next <laughs> <laughs> million to two million if he does not say motherfucker in a movie <laughs> um so uh moving to my next topic when we got done with the korean version of old boy one of the other things that bear and i discussed is that the humor worked better in the korean well, there version was, there was actually some humor the, the only korean humor version. that the american version had was basically when samuel jackson was on the screen yeah and that is because Samuel Jackson can be the baddest motherfucker in the world. Like Samuel Jackson can, can be doing his role from Kong Skull Island. Right. He's a badass general. He's gonna kick all this ass. But just the way he delivers things is funny. Yes. It's it's and not funny like he's bad at it. Funny just like yeah no this is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. like it's the yeah. it's the this is fucking awesome. You know? Yes. Yeah, it's um, that over the top like Christopher Walken and yeah. other. <laughs> actors right. where there's you just have, something about it that's sense. entertaining the food fairy yeah yeah i the nicholas cage effect if yeah. you will uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I just found it interesting because I've seen Spike Lee movies where he very flawlessly can put humor into um, very depressing or or situations where humor normally would not be. Um, girl 13 is a great uh, girl, girl 7, girl 13. It's his, his movie about a, a, a woman who is working at a phone sex um, hotline. I mean, awesome uh, humor mixed into a movie where you're dealing with a abuse and rape and and stalking and and just like horrible horrible things the korean version of this which i saw 
first. I saw it before the American version. I was actually, when I got to the American version, like, okay, well, the Korean version had at least some humor. Like, they're just the way some things were delivered, some ways you that, like... You believe me now, you bastard? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, in the middle of a scene where she's stripped half naked, there's 20 guys in the room, and, you know, somebody's gonna get beaten, or somebody's gonna get fucked. Like, this is what's gonna happen in this scene. Right, right. And, and it, it was done very well to break the tension, and I do appreciate that in the movie, but... And I don't know if maybe Lee was trying to just keep that tension, um, but I'm going to throw it to the rest of you on what you think about that. I don't think it was just the humor that broke the tension. I feel like it was also the fact that the Korean version is so stylized. Mm. Like the can one of the things I noticed uh, going through it the second time was in the Korean version compared to the American one, they move the camera more, except when they don't in the hallway scene. Right. Um, but like the scene in uh, where they're having their breakdown in the prison, for example. Um, the Korean version, the camera spirals around him mm -hmm. with flashing lights and him hallucinating these ants and then they have the broken mirror and the smear of blood and it's n it doesn't actually show anything directly. It's all implied, but it's very stylized. It's very not real and or surreal even <laughs> right yeah yeah and absolutely. then the american version that same scene it shows him crying and then he punches the mirror and then he cuts his wrist and it shows it all and it's in the same frame the same light the whole time again a very right. masculine breaking down yeah yeah yeah, yeah and i i agree with you uh lucas about the how stylized the the korean version was but I also felt like they, the Korean version did a much better job of showing how not only was Daesu uh, imprisoned, but he, he was indoctrinated. He was, he was trained, not just hypnotized. You know, it was, there were things that were done that, you know, to him that became part of his subconscious. And you didn't see that as much in the U.S. version. I mean, there weren't as many um, things that, you know, reactions that you saw in the U.S. version that you could say, yes, he's doing that because of what happened to him while he was in prison. Again, it seems like everything was just tied back to I'm angry. His right. response right. was exactly. to violently lash out, angrily lash out. Whereas Desu, we get like his fish factoids. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But we, I, I, I want to jump back to what Jen was saying because that that is, I don't know. It's it's weird to say because there was hypnotism, it was a little more believable. Um, but yeah, that's that is weird to say. It is weird to say. But there was it, well, was, it was also like, it was also it was also conditioning. It wasn't right. just hypnotism. It was it was conditioning. Right. But my my point is is that that was the contingency plan. This yes. mm -hmm. train was going to go along this track because they spent fifteen years conditioning, hypnotizing, what have you, to Desu. In the American version, it's just, there's a woman with an umbrella. She's going to go somewhere kind of near Marie. And as long as Joe picks a fight with someone, maybe yeah. they'll end up together. They, like, well, no, they actually, he actually hinted in the American version at the end, he, he did more than hint. He flat out talked about how he pretty much groomed her life, his daughter's yeah. life, to, for her to end up being a junkie, just like her father was a drunk you know end up being the and then cleaning up just like he cleaned up in prison he's basically setting up commonalities in their lives that will make them more susceptible to you know having a connection once they actually meet in real life right it and does it, it it does kind of remind me though of like the meme of of uh anakin meeting uh meeting Padme for the first time going are you an angel and her saying don't talk to me slave and then it just shows written and directed by george lucas like it could have been like joe picks a Fight. she's like hey stop that and he's like oh okay and he walks away written and directed by spike lee like yeah <laughs> um it just seems that the hypnotism aspect whether or not you believe in hypnotism in this movie it works yes. in this movie it's real and it so creates it creates a like... suspension of disbelief yes where this universe yeah. all of the conditioning makes sense well quote it, unquote it, it, because it, it, it is explained it right. actually yeah it makes a lot more sense just like you were saying because they also talk about how like they laced his drink with Risperdal. They had the uh, Valium, which uh, which bear as a as a former farmer yeah. 
Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah. Fucking love that. I, I was going through all this and I'm just like, okay, no, I, and even me, like, you know, from that background, it's like, okay, I can understand how all of this stuff works together a little bit more because they're talking about volume gas, lacing his drinks with Risperdal. Um, uh, what did they, they said something about the uh, sodium? Tony and Ben. Um, yeah. Yeah. The basically the sodium pentothal, whatever the heck it was, the right. that they were putting in something else. You know, they go through all these different drugs that they kept pumping into him, um, which explains him being in the state he's in when he's at when he yes, gets out. That right. also explains yeah. why hypnotism works on him you know it's going to work in this system like when you present that going oh they had him on a mess of psychoactive chemicals and they started hypnotizing him and conditioning him it's like yeah no all this makes perfect fucking sense yeah and they introduce the aspects of that they show him getting drugged they show him getting hypnotized yep. in the first 20 minutes of the movie whereas in the american version they don't mention it until the last five minutes right right no but and no then, setup like, I said, right. like I said again previously is that you know he does he does talk about specifically about how he pretty much curated his daughter's life right to set that up so it's like you're in prison while you're in prison I have an easier time working on this child you right. know that they I don't can show it throw money at right yeah. well and the the thing that they they take that time to show is basically they're not only conditioning uh, uh Joe they're conditioning the audience because they have the fake murder mystery yeah. like murder show yes that keeps the, showing the over and over mysteries that yeah. they didn't have the license for right the unsolved mystery the, there's no robert stack to come out um but i i appreciated that because i was actually wondering having seen the korean version i was like oh okay are they, because it's also it's an american version are they just going to stray away from that entirely you know is it never going to be that and then i was like i was like well, maybe, but maybe that was a fake show, but maybe because you never see that show outside when he goes outside and whatever. And I kept going back and forth. But you don't really have time to see the show once he's outside. He's only right. got six days or whatever. Right. But it, it wasn't until you hear, you know, or you walk down there and, and uh, Adrian's taking Joe down there and you see the couch and you're like, yep. This, this television show that was produced that only ever had one viewer. Right. Um, And I thought that was actually really clever because it does, even to the people familiar with the Korean work, you know, knowing how squeamish American audiences, especially in 2013, are about, you know, things like that. Maybe they won't go the full, you know, I'm having sex with my daughter route. Yeah. And then, yep, nope, sure, sure am. <laughs> oh, I, I, I kind of wondered about that, like, because you, you had hints, and I think I had all the hints put together by the time you see the uh, Elizabeth Olsen, Jock Brolin scene, sex scene. sex scene, and you already know that he's got the whole place, you know, our villain has the whole place bugged mm -hmm. everywhere, everywhere they go is bugged, and you see him get up suddenly super interested in what's going on, and I'm like, that's when I started scratching my chin and I'm just like everybody's but oh <laughs> that's where because I don't think they had released the information yet that um the scene that we saw in the greenhouse in the American version was the villain's sister with their father. Which is, yeah. We, no, we, no, we had, we had yeah. seen one scene yeah. of it, but we didn't know what it was just yet. Now, right. that's what I just kind of, everything just kind of clicked into place. And I was like, why would he be so interested that these two were suddenly having sex? And I just kind of, everything kind of snapped together. And I was like, oh, uh oh, is this where they're, okay, I'm going to watch and see if I'm right. Yeah, and that's another, it just seemed like in the American version, everything needed to be like, again, turned up to 11. Because it's not just a brother and a sister having sex it's a father having sex with his entire family and the mother apparently being totally fine with it totally cool with this yeah yeah uh and it's only when really it's all going to come out that everyone dies <laughs> everyone but the son dies um it, it just yeah it again watch the korean version first and then i watched the american version that was the one kind of part that i'm like do we really need to go that over the top with it <laughs> and then you thought about who the director was and you were like yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose it, it again, it kind of does fit into those different cultural aspects where basically the American version is very much about the, I mean, in both or in several different ways about the kind of white male oh, <laughs> yeah. rich white man getting away with doing all these terrible things and then they're getting his revenge on a different 
rich white man. Right, right. Like, okay. Well, not really that rich, but yes, another white man. Right. Uh, you know, because because Joe, Joe was a salesman, and yeah, he had some money, but Joe was, a Joe, was Joe was three to four months away from a from a federal indictment. Yeah. <laughs> and literally was, you know, had was deep enough into his vices that, as we see in the movie, got fucking fired. Right. He was at least playing the part. That's true. Yeah. Um. So it's going to be so hard now after seeing that and knowing that, you know, like five months from now, I have to see Josh Brolin do Gurney Halleck and it's just going to be night and day. You stand up in the theater and go, <laughs> you fuck your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and in one well, yeah, other... and then the next time I see any Marvel movie and I see one. And I'll, and I'll be... and I'll fuck Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Uh, he's the other, she's the other sister. So one of the one of the other thing, uh, Bear, that I have for you is you wanted Wu Jin Lee to walk away. You wanted to at the end of it. Yeah, I was just like, you know, it would be. I'm, I'm like, did he just like? Because you get the thing. It's like I'll give you this is my remote control, and I'm like, we get to the end of the movie. I'm like, it's just a fucking laser pointer, isn't it? That's all it is. And then you were like, no, nah, yeah, no, it's actually also plays the the it's the remote page. it's the remote control for his fucking stereo. And I was just like, just let him get away. <laughs> like that. That would have made the Korean version, I think, far superior in my mind. Just like bad guy walks away. I think the only reason that I wouldn't have liked that is because it kind of, uh, Desu does get him to admit to himself that he killed his sister. Yeah, yeah, because he relives it in the in the elevator. Him, I the entire crazy revenge plot feels like the entire point of it was just to shift blame away from himself in his own head. Yeah. And when that unravels, when the revenge plot is done and he finally realizes he can't justify it anymore. Yeah. I mean, plus... Which is a stark contrast from the American version where he's just like, uh, no, I'm going to torture this guy. I'm going to make his life hell. I'm going to do the same thing to him, you know, that happened in my life. And then I'm just going to go be with my sister. Well, Well, I felt like in the Korean version, that scene where you see where she actually committed suicide, it was almost like it was not because of the the rumors that were going around. It was her trying to get away from her brother. You know, she said, just let me go. Yeah. Just let me go. After she uh, apparently got pregnant from him or maybe not. It, mm-hmm. They didn't ever yeah. clarify it, but I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. the implication. Basically talking about the false pregnancy, and I'm just like, false pregnancy. Last I knew, and yeah, my medical training isn't that big of a thing, but it, it's still pretty rare. The only other thing that I was thinking of was that pregnancy would have come out in the autopsy because they did recover her body. Yeah. So pregnancy absolutely would be would have been something that the autopsy would have revealed. But so... the only source we have for information from that is Lee Wujin, right? Wujin. The right. Who yeah. is not a reliable narrator for that? Yeah, sure. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So, any other uh, things to say before we get to our final question? Well, we barely talked about the manga. Yes. Um, other than saying it's kind of the first half of this movie, right. it, Ish. manga number one. Ish. So yeah. here's the the big thing to me in the manga: we get no flashbacks to before his imprisonment. Mm-hmm. When he is telling his story, he says, "I don't know why I was imprisoned. I have no enemies. I don't know anybody." Whereas the other versions. They ha- were able to make a list of wrongs yeah, they did. Literally huge. In lists. some cases, entire notebooks. Yeah. 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 Um, the manga version, the like, he regains his sanity in the cell a week after he arrives. Yeah. In one of the sen- sentences. And he is immediately focused and collected. He's clean cut. He is immediately like, he's got it together. He has a plan. He is a boring, milk toast anime protagonist. Yeah. Uh, I will absolutely give you that. Yeah, the love interest like immediately goes home and sleeps with him with no build up, no given reason and no characterization to her. The villain we get to see behind the curtain immediately and at least know that the guy who was keeping him in prison wasn't the guy who did it. Like the entire thing, while it is the basic story, is this kind of hollow version of it. I was expecting the book to be this like longer, more drawn out, more interesting, more deep thing. And the felt yeah. shallow. I'm so typically our last question on this show is, will you keep reading? And 
And before I get to everybody else's answer, I'm going to spoil mine in a, in a response to you, Lucas, by saying this may be the first time that this was so out of out of the details that I'm looking for that I may keep reading it because there's eight of them, which means it's going to go past where the movie did. But I don't know how you, A, how you get there, B, what you do, you know? Yeah. Um, is this going to end up being like some sort of uh, another comic book? Like, ugh, not like this, but sort of is 100 bullets where, you know, there's a gun with 100 bullets in it and these bullets will exonerate you from whatever crimes you commit with them. Um, you know, that's that's something. But like when you're done with the hundred bullets, like if that's a movie, when you're done with the hundred bullets, what do you do? Like, how do you continue that story? And I think old boys the same way. It's like, okay, I've seen this, but you've also removed the daughter aspect because th there is no mention of a family. Um, I'm, I'm more curious on where do you go? Now, this is also where the movie hooked me and I'm really only, well, both movies hooked me. I'm only going to keep reading the manga to be like, okay, well, but where are you going with at least the story I'm familiar with and if i don't like the story that i'm familiar with where they go with it if it's still milk toast and, and boring then i'm i'm just not going to read anymore um so i guess that's where i'm at is is i said earlier that it's the first half of the movie and that it was fairly similar i guess that is not accurate in, in the ways that you're pointing out it is Probably it is in the milk toast version it's actually out of the three it's the most pain version well but it it, it it's just the beginning because right. there is no indication why. Right, right. Like that that has yet to be revealed. Why was he in prison? What is the, you know, and I think I think it's possible and I will keep reading absolutely because I am curious to see how that story plays out. I mean, my my guess that I think can bring all of it full circle is that um maybe he slept with somebody years ago um that the villain had a connection with that woman had a child and so the, it's it, it ends up being the child that Daisu doesn't even know about or the the nameless man yep. as as it as it is in the manga because he's decided mister, mister. He's yeah mister yeah yep. um but yeah it's it and so like this whole thing is set up that he sleeps with the daughter that he doesn't even know he has which again i think we're getting progressively worse <laughs> what we're doing um but yeah i I, I do want to see like, it. It also feels like if they were doing that, there'd need to be more setup for it to really want make me want to keep reading, though. Right. Like, right. I, I don't care about that guy. <laughs> right. All. Well, and I think, yeah, Lucas, I completely agree. I think that if I didn't have the the background of seeing the two movies, I wouldn't care. There it's, would be yeah. the, this would not be interesting at all. There was a. Uh, it reminds me of something that, uh, that John Cena said in interviews like a while ago when he was in uh, in wrestling and people would boo him even though he's supposed to be a good guy. And somebody's like, doesn't that bother you? He goes, if they're cheering or booing, they're at least invested in me, you know, one way or another. And I and I love me, hate me, hate me. You're Either way, you're still it. thinking about me. Right. And it's exactly that. It's it's you know the the Korean movie made him pathetic, but yep. he was a pathetic character you're following. The uh, the American version, as you said, Lucas, made him wretched. But it's a wretched character, or or uh, wretched was the Korean version. Yeah. Um. But the American Despicable. version made him just just a complete asshole. Despicable. Yeah. 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 Perfect place. Toxic but, masculinity. <laughs> right. But you're following because you're like, haha, that fucker's getting his. And then like you're kind of and, invested into, okay, well, now it's a mystery, you know. And then they bake his rats and you feel sad for oh, them. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That was a much better like that scene. I'm like, okay, all right, fuck you, Spike Lee, and your in your bullshit. Yeah. All right. Seriously, as far as whether or not I'm gonna keep reading this thing, no. Okay. I have zero desire to keep reading, but the interesting point that I was gonna make was out of all of it the, the graphic novel or the manga is the thing that makes the most sense yes i think it makes the most sense because it fits within every other just like lucas said milk toast you know hero of of the genre and but i have zero desire to read it and this is i think it's got some fun stuff i want to watch like I, i've watched a few movies basically i'm gonna wait for you and jen to read it and then go tell me about it so does he fuck his daughter and you're gonna say yes or no and i'll be like okay fine and that's all i need to know like i can i can put the rest of the bits and pieces together 
in my own fucking head. Yeah, I, I feel the manga falls into the trope that a lot of manga and anime do in, you know, your hero doesn't need to be that uh, interesting because he's the hero, because yep, he's right. the protagonist. Um, I, 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 it's well documented. I'm not a huge fan of anime, but the ones that I do like generally subvert that. So there's one- Things of, like Trigun and- March the Successor Nadesco is probably one of my best examples of that. And I've never even heard you talk about oh it. Oh my God. So okay, so the main- Things to watch. The main character's a cook and he's- He's like this milk toast who cares character but for some reason every girl loves him and wants to be with him and like all these other things are happening but the supporting I've seen this but it was on Pornhub. yeah uh, <laughs> and all the supporting characters reference it they all are like what the hell like <laughs> how come everyone's so interested in him he is boring he is nobody and then as soon as they get in their presence it's like <laughs> yeah it, i mean it's, it's a whole thing the screen right it's a it's a whole thing and and that's that's what I like, you know. I like when this type of hero is subverted. That's probably the only time I'm really going to follow. Unless you've got really good supporting characters, which again, this did not. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they really don't hardly anybody does he deal with at all. Yeah, we, so we got literally no characterization from that whole first book. Right. Yeah. He, he's he's just the dude that can do one-handed push-ups. Yep. And okay. works construction and, and, and via, yeah, under an assumed name. Yeah. So Lucas, I guess I'll I'll ask you, you revisited this. Uh we you keep reading it i am not planning to i okay. got i was curious enough to go look up a a, a wikipedia summary and oh i could do that and that You'd was about the extent video. of my interest yeah. i'm not okay. sure if i want to watch a youtube video on it i think it's going take too much time i can skim faster than that uh okay so new last question then if somebody's going to watch if somebody's going to introduce this one of these movies to their friend which one oh um it depends on the friend that was exactly okay, what yeah. i was gonna say <laughs> yeah it really does because there are some friends that would be like do you like josh brolin do you like samuel l jackson do you want to see elizabeth olsen nude like there are some people i'd i'd pose it to that way there are other people that i would pose it to and be like how do you feel about you know asian cinema yeah yeah i mean like i said i wouldn't is- ask them Bear, I wouldn't ask them. I would say, okay, I know this person. This is the version I would show them. Okay, fair, 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 fair yeah. enough. <laughs> but like, if, if I'm going to show this to my buddy Eldon, right. who is okay. out there in the world somewhere, I'm going to be like, I'm not going to show him the new version. I'm going to be like, here, this one's right up your alley. Let me let me ratify the question. Which one did you appreciate more? Yeah, I don't think I could. I, I think I appreciated both for different reasons. I, I definitely appreciated the Korean version more. I felt like there was a lot more depth to it in the end and it was a the stylism to it was definitely the big thing like it definitely has the feelings of the you know greek tragedy that it's evoking yeah and yeah. like the the you know you can see it's getting it's where it's getting its influences from with like everything from you know shakespeare and kafka and all the other literary stuff it references and personally the american oh, version sorry, was a decent like action movie with some weird mystery stuff to it it wasn't as bad as i was expecting from all the mm-hmm. reviews it wasn't bad right but the korean one is has all the notoriety well the korean one also i think aside from the the depth of the the screenplay itself which i agree with you there um i i feel like it also you you felt more attachment and you know negative or positive to the characters in the korean version yes. like you were more invested in those stories than you were in the U.S. version. And I don't know if it's because I saw the Korean version first, and so I knew what was happening in the U.S. version. I was wondering that as well, like if that would impact the the watching order Mm -hmm. impacts it. I I think it might, because I watched the American version first, and I was actually more invested in the characters there because I thought thought Josh Brolin did a a fairly decent job of being a despicable male. Um, I thought Emily Olsen, or Elizabeth Olsen did uh, a great job as being the, you know, empathetic, empathic uh, medical person with a sorted past. Samuel L. Jackson did a great job being Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Marie was also a more interesting character than Mido was. I think so. I actually, and I yeah. absolutely think that that was a much more interesting character. Completely. Um, but... 
And yeah, I don't know if that's a Korean cinema thing, because all of the other Korean cinema I've seen, it's kind of the same thing, is that women are... are oh, that was the thing that I wanted to bring up that we talked about when we were watching the movie, because she was like, I brought you home so I can understand why you're upset. It was basically right after yeah. the rapes, the almost rape scene. Right. It's like, I brought you home so I can understand why you're upset that I said no, but I still want to. And when I do, I'm going to sing this like, song. I'm going to sing this song. And I might still fight you at first, but I want you to just go for it. And I, literally just like fist out, just, just yeah. go for it. And I'm like, oh. I wrote that I wrote that out to I don't fully understand Korean culture enough to make a judgment on that. Yeah. But, yeah. Both um, the manga and the Korean version, the way that the love interest is presented is kind of creepy from a Western. Language. Yeah. And I'm wondering yeah. if that's a if that's a cultural thing, because like also, like I said, the other the because other media the, that I've the, seen, they gotta put up some fight. Whereas we're like, no means no, motherfucker. Well, no, that not that aspect. I'm just talking in general. Female characters in things that I've seen when it comes to Korean uh, film are are set pieces. Um, very rarely do they have um, agency or or a, a fleshed out character. You know, Mido in in the Korean version was was there to be there. Was there to yeah, it's just to be a woman on the uh, like in right, the role, right? Filling the role of daughter, well, lover, love interest, like all of that. And, you know, not to not not to get too far deep into spoilers of the comic, but um, Eerie in the comic felt more like a daughter figure, even though they had sex. She behaved more like his daughter, even though she was like, can I call you my lover? It's like, no, you're behaving like he's your father. No, I'm going yeah. to cut this thing out of you. But it, once I do it, then you have to be my boyfriend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, they, we he takes her. He takes her to a carnival. Yeah. They go to a carnival and they do things not like a boyfriend and a girlfriend. It really did feel like father daughter. Yeah. She has this really weird clingy, like she like yeah. leans her head on his shoulder as they're oh, yeah, like going totally back on the train. On the minute, like she hasn't even talked to him. Also, they have sex before he explains any of his backstory stuff before the sense of empathy or relationship is built at all like yeah. it's just this weird dude that she met this, yeah. it, you can you can tell that this was all very written from a male perspective like yeah. because even in the even in the manga and oh people, my god the editor's note like spoilers note or spoiler alert like she was a virgin in the manga too and there's yeah. an editor's note in the margins that said if women were this easy i'd be in the triple digits by now oh yeah. wow yeah. okay yeah i did not see that i didn't see I, that I either missed it too i didn't oh. I, was, I, was, I was too busy i was too busy just being flabbergasted by the fact that any of this happened proofers yeah. note if virgins oh. were really this easy my count would be in the triple digits yeah i just sorry i just brought it up on the screen it's between two panels in the white space yeah and it took me it took me a while to realize that they were putting notes in there when I'm, I was reading it. oh yeah see so I, was, I was reading I was panel by panel yeah, yeah, I did. So I didn't see any of that. I didn't see any notes like that. Okay, I'm yeah. curious I was doing, now. I was doing page, page by seventy-five. Page like was was I'm I'm wondering if that was an editor's note from the Japanese editor, yeah. or if it was at, at something that from got the, added in in the Dark Horse version. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I have no idea what version I had. I would you assume know, was, the Japanese it version. Was obviously, a weird but, ass version that you found because. Yes, because it didn't work on most of the CBR readers. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, I've got this one, and every other digital copy I've read has worked fine. And you're like, oh, your your digital reader is junk. You should use one of these. And I'm just like, but, but, and then it didn't work on Jens. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, well, okay. huh, yeah. okay. I've just dealt with a lot of junk CBR readers that Jen hated, so. I mean, I like Comic yes. Time. I think it does a good job. The only thing I don't like about Comic Time is it came in the ass to, like, you can't just jump back to the beginning and start over. Mm. So yeah, uh, this this has been Old Boy. Uh, <laughs> Lucas, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Oh yeah, it, 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 this was a great time um, on a really weird subject. Um, yeah. Maybe, this may be one of the weirdest. Like We've done some pretty messed up shit. Yeah. But I don't think we've seen anything this messed up. I think this is arguably more messed up than Tank Girl. Who? Which was probably I mean, the next most messed up thing we've done. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, 
Why? Did you ask, what, what was your suggestion? No, I'm just surprised that you think Tank Girl is this messed up. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I said this is more messed up than Tank Girl. I, I know, but I, I, I can't believe that there's not something else. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, that you think Tank Girl is this messed up? There's Remember, different I kinds of weird. Didn't even get exposed yeah. to Tank Girl. I didn't even hear about Tank Girl until I was in my 30s, and then I didn't watch it until we did it for this episode. Well, what's weirder, fucking your daughter without knowing it, or fucking a kangaroo? What's weirder, yeah, being able to shoot are... lasers with your eyes, or <laughs> having uh, blades come out of your hand? They're comic books. Come on. I mean, yeah, my entire thought process when you said weird it was, I'm not sure if this is more or less convoluted than trying to explain uh, X-Men time travel storyline. No, Thank no, you. Not, not, <laughs> listen, Brett Conversations, we just did House of X, Powers of X. I'm sorry. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, and I'm doing Secret Wars. I don't, I don't want to go back to the Dark Phoenix saga. Please don't. Don't make me. Oh, no, no. I'm Dark Phoenix scared, Saga Dave. is easy well, to dream. explain by comparison. Yes, yes, it was just garbage and you shouldn't do it. <laughs> All right, on that note, please uh, <laughs> tune, in, tune in in two weeks when we will be doing Invincible. Invincible. Uh, until then, take it away, Vandello. <laughs> But the same old trouble, villains always knocking at the door. Pretty pictures on the page, but nothing ever stays the same. Do, 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 do,